Wow. Ten years ago, I was sitting over there on, my, on the day of my graduation, and if you would have told me that ten years later, a decade later, I'd be standing here at this University of New South Wales, the top university in Australia, one of the leading tertiary education institutions in the Asia Pacific, and one of the few non-American universities ranked in the global top 50, I would not have been the least bit surprised. But if you would have told me that 10 years later, standing in front of 1,500 of the brightest young minds in, in this entire Asia Pacific region, would be standing a child of immigrants, who's writing a book about how finance can repair the world, who lives in New York, who didn't do particularly well in his degree, by the way. And that kid was me? I tell you, you're dreaming. Uh, but I guess dreams become reality. And it's such a, I want to be absolutely clear what an honor it is for me to be here today. Because I've had the privilege over the last number of years of speaking at places like the United Nations in New York, the World Economic Forum in Davos, the Harvard Kennedy School, Yale, Columbia. I've given a TED talk. In fact, I'm doing another one next week. And never before my parents had the, the opportunity to see me speak live. And, and I'm really privileged and honored not only to be here, but the fact that they're here. Because all the accolades, all the, all the, all the rewards, etc. Really, it's a dividend of their sacrifice. It's a dividend of their hard work. And the fact that in this country, in this city, at this university, in this auditorium is where it's happening is the most special day of my life because this is where it all started for me. Because the person sitting next to you, you don't know who they're going to be. They could be a president, a prime minister, a CEO, a world leader, a philanthropist, a good human being. Remember where you came from. Remember this day. And I guess in the, in the university, we're good enough to break from tradition by inviting someone like me at my stage of life to talk about my journey of success. And rather than giving you some sort of prepared formula or boring speech at a lectern, I'd rather just talk to you from here. And I'd rather talk to you about values, core values, the things that matter most. And values are not words. Values are how you live your life. And I've learned, I call them the five Fs. And I guess I've kind of learned them the hard way. And in, if your university degree is anything like mine, you'll, you'll really rely on the cheat sheet and the crib notes. So hopefully I can, I can help you in that, in that regard. And, and more importantly, at this honor to be addressing you as you commence this important phase of your life, never forget where you come from. So of course, it's, it's appropriate that I talk about family. For me, family I define as the people who believe in you. They could be related to you, they could share your DNA, they, they could be your mates, they could be a teacher, they could be a mentor. Find the people who believe in you. People who don't believe in you do not deserve a place in your life. And when you find those people, hold on to them and don't let them go. That's your family. But not only do you need to have people who believe in you, you need to believe in you. But you also need to believe in something that's bigger than you. You've got to have faith. You've got to have faith. For some people, that's in God. For some, it's in their community. For some, it's their football team. For some, it's their job. It's a passion. It's a cause. You've got to believe. You've got to trust. When I was your age, I didn't trust. I didn't believe. Like many people, at the time, I, I thought I was a bulletproof and indestructible alpha male who could do anything. Until I realized that I wasn't bulletproof and I wasn't indestructible. Because I was at the top of that rope. And uh, I learned pretty quickly the importance of faith when you're right at that top, holding yourself with nothing but your body weight, and your left humerus just snaps. You learn quickly about the importance of faith. And when you're hanging by one good arm at the top of that rope with a 50-foot cliff fall below, with no legs, no harness for support, just your upper body strength, you've got to believe. But 
Like every good fairy tale, there's a happy ending, so I'm here to tell you the story. But the importance of believing and trusting my buddies below, the first responders, the ambulance, the stretcher, the nurses, the doctors, the, the surgeons, my family, is what got me through that. And of course, it was a very dark period of my life. It was probably my lowest low, and I was deep in a black hole. But what got me out of that black hole, and this was, by the way, only the, the second of three significant traumas that happened to me within about a three-month period. And when you're, when you're constantly thinking, why me? Why is this happening to me? What got me through that was, was fitness. The greatest antidepressant ever existed, ever invented is called endorphins. Whenever you are feeling like you're in that black hole, like you're doing it tough, go outside. Go and chase that light. Start moving. Walk, run, go to the gym. Five years later, I've run five international, major international marathons. I, I, could, I couldn't even run before my injury. I couldn't even run before, before, before that life-changing experience. Running is freedom. Don't ever feel like you're in a place where there's no way out. There is. Running saved my life. Fitness, your mental health, your physical health are the most important things you can have. They're intertwined. Because if you stand still, you fail. And let's talk about failure. You know, failure has become an overprescribed term, in, in my humble opinion. It's been written about, it's been talked about, often by people that have never put their body on the line, that have never risked everything, all of their capital for an idea. I, for one, think failure is, is a good thing. I think fear of failure is also a good thing. You know, as a young person who's successful, I've been told my entire life, Jeremy, you're too young. Jeremy, you're not old enough. Jeremy, come back in 20 years. I can't control other people's insecurities, but what I can control is my reaction. I own the outcome. You own the outcome. Failure is standing still. In life, you're going to be, hopefully only metaphorically, kicked in the guts, kicked while you're down, punched. I've been stabbed in the back, stabbed in the front. It's just roadkill on the journey. I control the outcome. You control the outcome. You control your reaction. But standing still, lying in bed every, in the morning, and being knocked down and lying in that gutter, that's failure. Getting back up and moving on, and doing something about it and moving, and just keep moving, just keep moving forward. That's success. And of course, finance, what we're all here to do today to talk about. Finance has been through a period of failure. And of course, finance is actually what's going to get the world out of its mess. And I'll take a step further. You guys are going to get the world out of this mess. Because between free markets and young people, that's how we repair this broken world. That's how we pay down this enormous debt. That's how we deal with youth unemployment, which is the greatest challenge of our time. That's how we deal with stagnant global growth. It's the private sector. And at this amazing Australian School of Business, you're all going to go on to do incredible things. I don't know what they're going to be, although I want to hear about it. In whatever sphere of influence in your life, and if it's a business route, remember the importance of what you're doing and why. Remember the beauty of what finance is. Finance is about matching ideas with capital and capital with great ideas. It's about unlocking the dreams and the hopes of billions of people to achieve their realities, to fund small businesses, to, to, to provide venture capital for, the, for, for that app that you want to go and sell for $19 billion one day, to buy that home for the first time, to build this university and to build the hospital next door. It's not just about enriching a chosen few. Always remember that. How we make money matters. And it's business that is the solution to the world's problems. Business is not the cause of it. Business is the solution. Because it's business that has the power to do what governments cannot. And finance is like that essential pipeline infrastructure under the ground underpinning our society because it's the free flow of capital 
to where it's needed most, that ensures that that company can go and build that manufacturing plant to employ thousands of people, to provide the finance for that brave mother or father to open up that small business and employ that extra person. Creating jobs is important. You're all going to be creating jobs one day. Remember why. Remember how. And remember that when your business becomes profitable, that's a good thing. Pay tax. Receive your dividends. Remember your community. Remember the importance of giving. Remember this university. But the most important thing is that finance is the noble cause. Positively influencing the allocation of capital. That is what we're here to do. Of course, these are the, the five core values, the five Fs. There's plenty more. You'll, just, you'll find more, I hope, in your life, and I look forward to adding to that list, whether they're F words or not. <clears throat> but the most important thing to remember is that we are all, you are all destined to be a world champion, to be a world champion at something. It could be as an athlete, it could be as a student, it could be as a stamp collector, it could be as a plumber, it could be as a mother, a husband, a human being. You know, your mission is to find that. Don't live someone else's life. Live your own. Create your own existence. Define yourself. Because life, we are told too often by words and actions in the society we live, is about sheer existence. It's just about getting through. It's not. Life is about living. Life is about living. You've got to have fun. Whatever you do, you've got to have fun. If you're not having fun, go do something else. Because when you find your destiny, when you find what it is that you're a world champion of, you're going to have plenty of fun. And I don't want to read about you becoming a world champion in a newspaper. I want you to tell me about it. I want you to get in touch. When one of you becomes a president one day, instead of thinking about dropping that nuclear bomb, give me a call. Or if you're at the Olympics, if you're at the Olympics in a gold medal final, I want to be there. But you're all destined to be a world champion. Go and find your destiny. But remember, it starts here. Never forget where you come from. Thank you.